uh, we're glad he's a target. What was the thing that really most uh, drew you to him as a high school prospect? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's easy to see the physical talent. You know, when you turn on his high school tape, he dominated on the field. Physical. I mean, he, whether it was running or throwing, he was in complete control. Uh, but you look beyond the physical talents and you look at what he's done off the field, the academics, uh, how he was within their community. And every person you talk to at that high school or that community had nothing but great things to say about him. And obviously when you're, when you're looking for a guy to be the face of your program, those things are important You know, at, at that position, probably more so than any of them. When you flip a kid who's a recruit from one local school to you guys, is it especially satisfying? <laughs> It's, it's, you know, it's just recruiting. I mean, we have it happen to us all the time. And, you know, we, for us, we recruit the guys that we've got committed just as hard or harder than we recruit the guys that aren't committed because we know somebody else is out there trying to talk to them at all times. You know, so the, just because they commit, we know the process isn't over. And, and it's really sometimes more of a challenge because guys get less and less love from other places. All of a sudden, a guy's committed, and he's not getting the letters, he's not getting the phone calls. So, so we, it's continuous, it's never ending, you know? And we take a sigh of relief when they show up on campus or they sign that letter. Do, do you remember when you started recruiting Chaz or when you saw first? Saw uh, you know, I think first? we watched him as a sophomore. Okay. Uh, and, the, and the process started really early. I mean, he was a dynamic athlete. Um, you know, I know he played receiver for him early in his career, and, and you saw the flashes of talent there. You saw his ability as a quarterback, and you know, you, you saw the progress keep developing. Uh, but the process happens so early nowadays. Uh, you know, he was a guy in the state that we identified as a guy that, hey, he fit the profile of what we're looking for in his program. Um, Coach Fedora said that you just ask the player and his family, do you want to still be recruited? Is that kind of all it is? And you just kind of treat like you? Like you know, was... I mean, we can send them stuff all day and we can call every day, but if they don't, if they don't return calls or they don't return texts or it's not reciprocated, then we're just wasting our time. And we're wasting our time that could be spent with somebody else. So we, we always try to reach out and, one, find out why they made the decision they made and ask, it, do you still want to keep getting recruited? Do you still want to keep having these conversations? Because it's really, it's, it's building the relationship. And the more time you have building that relationship, the stronger it gets. And, and they were open to, to the process, so we, we just kept the lines of communication open, and eventually it got to a point where, where he was comfortable with UNC. I know in part of your recruitment with Chaz, you would go watch him play basketball as well. Do you know how many times you saw him play? You know, I think, I know I've seen at least a couple basketball games. I've seen football games. Um, I can't tell you the exact number, but I know this. In the, the month of December, when you can be at a prospect school once a week, whether it was me or Coach Brew or Coach Fedora, somebody was there every week recruiting. And, and that's that's not non-typical. I mean, that's pretty much what we do with most of them, you know, the guys that are, are highly recruited and the guys that we've got committed. When you have a guy, when you're recruiting a guy that plays a, another sport, especially a sport like basketball, um, how important is it to watch them in that sport and see the, the, the range of the things they can do physically? Well, I, lo I love the com competition part. You know, they're, they're guys that play other sports and it's not their dominant sport or they're not, they don't take over in that sport, but you just see them compete, you see the fire. And to me, that's that's missing a lot of times in, in recruiting and guys, are, they only play one sport and you only see them in one environment. I love watching guys play multiple sports and they get out and, and they just they just love to compete. They love to play because that's what it takes when they get here is, is you, you become part of a group and everybody's talented. And the most competitive guys usually rise to the top. So being able to see guys compete, that's there's a lot to that for me, especially with quarterbacks. Do you anticipate?